Do you ever find yourself just drawn to a game? Whether it's art, whether it's game mechanics, whether it's components, whether it's a match of all three? Well, it's definitely happened to me with this game. So join me as we go in the footsteps of Darwin. of this video we're going to set up a three player game. So firstly place the board in the centre of the table. Next place nine tiles in their dedicated spaces in the centre of the board. When they're done it should look something like that. Next take 12 tiles for each player and place them in a pile face down by the board. Take your publication tokens and put them in a pile on the indicated area of the board. Take your guide tokens and also place them in that area of the board, as well as all of the compass tokens. Next, place the theory tiles in their dedicated area on the board and flip over three for the start of the game. Place Darwin somewhere near the board and the beagle in its start space on the board. Give each player a notebook, leaving any unused notebooks in the box. And then hand each player one theory tile and one guide tile to place in the relevant area on the board. In the footsteps of Darwin, we are voyaging around the board on the Beagle as we look out for different type of wildlife species, find allies and guides to help us create theories and publications to amass the most amount of victory points by the end of the game. Taking a turn is really simple. You'll take a tile from the row that has the HMS Beagle. As it starts in the centre of the board, I have the choice of a giant panda, a raccoon or a lovebird. Now, the red panda is an Asian mammal, so it will benefit me to take the red panda for two points because I will get a bonus point at the end of the game for that. Each tile has its own value and score, which I will go through as I select them. But fundamentally, what you're doing is you're taking a tile from the board, from the main board, then you're placing it in your notebook in its dedicated space. After you've taken your tile and placed it in your notebook, you then can move the beagle. Now, the beagle will move dependent on which tile you took. For example, we took the red panda, so we will move the beagle just one square. Now, had I taken the raccoon, it would have moved two. One, two. Or the lovebird, it would have moved three. Now, the next player can only take from this row across here. So, can this player can take John Henslow a raccoon or a red kangaroo. And you will go round and round like that, moving the beagle, selecting tiles until you've put 12 tiles on your board. Then it's time for final scoring. But first, what are the tiles and what do they give? So we know about victory points. Victory points are just a simple red logo that has the number on. We then will have tiles like the kangaroo. The kangaroo has a compass. Every time you take a tile with a compass, you place it on your board like normal, and then you gain one compass from the main board and place it in the compass section of your player board. Compasses are really important to give you extra bonuses when scoring. However, compasses on their own don't score a thing. Also, every time you draw a tile, remember to fill it up. So, for that example, I then took the kangaroo, so I would move the beagle three. Perfectly, this gives me the lovebird. Now the lovebird has a scroll on the bottom of the tile. You can see just there, a lovely scroll. Now, why scrolls are really important? Again, on their own, they do not score a thing. So I will take the lovebird, I'll place that in the relevant section of my notebook. Now every scroll you get, you multiply by the, the amount of compasses that you have on your board. Currently, I have one scroll, one compass, so I only am gonna score one point. 
But as the grain progresses and I get more scrolls and more compasses, that multiplier becomes bigger and bigger and I'll get a better score at the end of the game. There are two other types of tile on the board with different logos. One is this logo of a guide. When you gain a guide, you can put one of the guides from supply onto your main board. Remember, you start the game with one. You can add another, but you're only allowed two guides at the end of the game. But what is a guide for? I hear you yelling at the screen. Now, when we're moving the beagle around the board, you simply move it based on the number of tiles that you, you've, what number tile you've taken. However, if someone has played a really strategic move and made sure that the beagle is there, but you really wanted that raccoon from the centre row, you can pay one of your guides to go on an expedition and you can move the beagle one backwards or forwards. So I can pay one of my guides from, from the board in back into supply, move the beagle back and be able to gain that raccoon and place him on the board and then move the beagle as usual. The other icon on the board is this. The tiger has a crown on the board. A lot of the animals have crowns on the board. And what that will mean is you will take this little Darwin chappy and put him somewhere in your player area. Dar having Darwin in your hand at the end of the game is worth two victory points. However, if someone later on plays a crown on one of their token tiles, they will get Darwin and Darwin will just be passed around like a illicit narcotic on a youth's birthday party. I don't, I don't know that. Anyway, Darwin goes around as you, you get the point. There's only one very special tile in the box and that is Charles Darwin himself. This tile here, you'll notice that it has the logo of the person, which is great. So you get a guide from supply onto your board, but it also has an icon for a theory tile. You can then take any of the theory tiles, either of the three on display or blind, you can take any of these two and place it on your board, which will give you another theory tile to build up and up and up and up until you get more theory tiles, more bonuses, extra points at the end game, more score, and then hopefully you will be the best naturalist ever to exist ever in the world, ever. Because that is what we want in life. So two other small rules to go through with this game. You can indeed place a tile on top of a tile in your notebook. Now, like I said, kangaroos, this kangaroo that we draw, drew had a compass on it, which was great. We gained a compass. Now we can cover this kangaroo with another mammal from the board, another blue mammal. And what would happen is if you cover a tile, you can then take any of the theory tokens from this side of the board. So for example, I've got lots of mammals on my board. So I definitely want to take this theory tile that gives me one point for every mammal on my board. Now, with the compass, you can cover that and it won't really affect you. However, if you cover a tile that is worth two victory points with something that's worth one victory point, you will only get the point value of the one that's on the top. Compasses are the kind of, um, the different part of the rule because compasses you already gain and they're already in your supply so you, you don't lose a compass just for covering it. So that's one way to mitigate the low scoring of a compass is you just cover them up once you, once you get them, which is cool. Um, and now the other thing is getting a row. So on your notebook, you'll have, you have rows and columns of different animals from different uh, continents. Now, if you manage to fill a row of mammals, say for example, or you, you fill a row of the specific color, you will then gain a publish publication, which is one of these books. You place that on your board in the area that it belongs, and that will give you five points towards the end of the game. So we go round and round on the board, collecting tiles, gaining bonuses, getting compasses, po hosting publication, posting a theory, doing all of that. And then once you've done that and you have 12 tiles on your board, the game ends. 
Everyone will have 12 tiles on their board and then it's time to work out final scoring. Final scoring is pretty simple. It comes with a lovely annotated notepad. So it's points on the animals. Then you have your compasses times by your scrolls, your publications, your theories. And then if you have Charles Darwin in your player area, that extra two points, total out, work out total score. And then the winner wins and the losers have to do the dishes. That's in this house anyway. The other thing is a tiebreaker. If there is a tie, the person who has the most points in theory bonuses is then the winner. So the maximum amount of points they've gained with the theories, not the amount of theories they have. Um, and if there's still a tie, um, everyone shares the spoils um, or everyone has to do the dishes. That depends on how you want to play it. And that's it. That is the footsteps of Darwin in its completion. It is a beautifully, beautifully produced games. Um, Sorry We're French and Hachette publications have just outdone themselves with the quality of this game component wise. The notebooks with the little scuff marks and the design on them. Um, the tiles are a good thick quality they're not going to just fray and fall apart everything is looking really good you've got the map on the back which has got essentially where all of the animals would be found in your in as you were searching around as darwin everything is really neatly designed the rule book really straightforward as straightforward as the game is the rule book is a perfect example of a great quality rule book easy to read um like bonuses how to what they all mean and stuff like that because the iconography is perfect one of the things i will say about the board in general is the board has everything on it that you would ever need so you get this iconography this is for a book this iconography this is for that there is one thing i forgot to mention in the teach not only can your guide um go back one or two they can also discard an entire row and then replenish an entire row. So I do problem, do it, and then that row that you discard goes back into the bottom of these decks, um, and then you f pull out three new ones. So I do apologize, but if you've got this far in the video, you know the rule I made, you know the mistake I made, and then they, they don't know the rule I made, mistake I made, do they? Do they? They don't, they don't know, but you, you're on, you're on the ball because you're my friends because you stayed the full length of the video, even though there's a little bit more. Um, yeah, so I really like this video, um, game. There's also an appendix, which is cool, which is like in the game Meadow, um, which has got all the information on the different species, um, that Darwin would have journeyed and found on his origins of the species. Um, and that's that. That is the entirety of the footsteps of Darwin. Thank you so much for coming along on this little adventure with me. Um, be sure to click that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you want to see more, um, leave a comment below. Tell me if you like the video, if you're really excited for, to try the game, if there's something else that you want me to create a video for or a playthrough or a review for. Let me know in the comments. That would be amazing. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Get Into Games. I have posted a lot more content on there. Um, I am getting better at doing YouTube. I promise you that. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next step in um, this board gaming adventure. But thanks so much. Love you all. Toodles. I should all. And we'll end every video with an awkward wave. So.